Hey, hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. Let's take a look at gross domestic product and the understanding of how to measure economic activity in a particular nation. Okay, first of all, gross domestic product. This video is designed to talk about gross domestic product, the different kinds of gross domestic product that there are, nominal GDP, real GDP, what the differences are between them. But GDP is the primary measure of the total economic activity in a nation, in a nation, right? And it's called gross domestic product. It's the total economic activity, the total products made in a country, right? Gross means total, okay? So the definition, the total value of a nation's output in a particular period of time, which is usually a year. If you look in your IB Economics book, you will see that there are different ways of measuring GDP, different ways of getting there, okay? What we're going to focus on in this video is explaining the expenditure approach. For information on the other ways of uh, measuring GDP, take a look at your textbook. But we're going to talk about the expenditure approach of GDP because it builds our knowledge of, of GDP and works towards our understanding of the aggregate demand curve. So the aggregate demand curve is a representation of all of the demand in a country. All of the demand in the country could be summed up by GDP, as we're going to see in a second, because GDP equals C, consumption, plus investment, I, plus government spending, G, plus X minus M, right? Exports minus imports. So this GDP calculation, C plus I plus G plus X minus M, equals GDP, and it is represented, and you will see this in a further video, as the aggregate demand curve, because the aggregate demand curve is represented by a collection of these four components. Okay, so it's super important to understand gross domestic product. So more detail here, right? GDP equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M. C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Get that in your brains, right? C equals consumption, which is the total spending by households on goods and services. Plus investment, I, which is the investments of firms. Investments firms make in new capital or that households make in real estate and home purchases. G is government spending, the spending government does on public goods, right? If the, if the government decides to put in a park, they have to pay money, right, to build the park, plant the grass, the trees, pay, pay the engineers, pay the architects, right, maintain the park. That's government spending, and that means jobs. That means there's an influx of cash into the economy. And the last component of GDP, which is also the component of aggregate demand, as we will get there, is, e, is X minus M, or exports minus imports. And that's the spending of foreigners on goods produced by our country, in my case, Chile, minus the spending Chilenos, domestic consumers, make on goods produced abroad. And so these four things, consumption, investment, government spending, and exports minus imports, equal the gross domestic product, which will also equal the aggregate demand in a, an economy, okay? So hold on to those thoughts. Keep them there. Don't get overwhelmed. It's going to all fall in line and make a lot of sense. Okay, now there are two different kinds of GDP we're going to talk about in this slide. One is called nominal gross domestic product, and the other is real gross domestic product. Okay, nominal means the, me the nominal GDP measures the value of a nation's output produced in a year expressed in the value of the prices charged for that year. So it does not take into account inflation. So let's say you buy a computer this year, right? And it costs you $1,000. Okay, next year you buy that so, so the GDP would be, right, output $1,000. But if you were to buy that same computer, right, next year, assuming it's the exact same computer, same quality, it might cost you $1,050. Okay, why? Because the value of the currency that you're using has changed. But so maybe because of inflation and a general rise in prices, the $1,050 you paid this year is the same 
amount of spending power as the $1,000 you spent last year. So next year's nominal GDP might look like there's been more output, more gross domestic product, but really it's because of inflation. So nominal GDP does not account for a rise, does not account for a rise in prices. Real GDP does. So real GDP is the value of a nation's output in a particular year adjusted for changes in the price level from a base year. So what they'll do is they'll take a year like, say, 2010, and they'll make that base year of zero. And they'll do calculations to make sure that anything purchased in 2016 is adjusted to 2000 to the value of, in this case, the Chilean peso in 2010. Okay, so that's the base here. And this offers a more accurate measure of the actual quantity of goods and services a nation produces because it adjusts for price changes. So it would take my $1,050 that I spent on the computer, right, this year and make it only worth $1,000. And then that way you can actually compare, you're comparing the same thing. You're comparing the value of, of goods and services, right, based on the same price levels. Okay, so real GDP is what's really important to us. The next thing I want to talk about is real GDP, the concept we just talked about, and GDP per capita. Because real GDP, while a nation's real GDP tells us the actual value of the output in a particular year adjusted for inflation, it does not tell us whether a nation is rich or poor. Because if you think about it, the more people you have probably the higher your real GDP is going to be. So if there's a, like, if you're, so this is when we're comparing two different countries, right? Chile has 17 million people in it. The United States has 300 million. So if you just took the output, GDP, guess what's going to be bigger? Well, hello, the United States. Why? Because it has 300 million people in it as a buying things, as opposed to 17 million. So what economists have developed is something called GDP per capita, which measures the total GP, GDP of a nation divided by the total population. So this gives a more realistic measure of how rich a nation is. So you can, more, you can compare the general wealth or output of a country right, uh, using GDP per capita because you're going to take the real GDP of the United States and divide it by 300 million, right? And you're going to take the real GDP of Chile and divide it by 17 million. And those numbers are comparable because they're divided by, the ratio would be correct per person, per capita means per person. So what is the GDP per person for 17 million versus three GDP per person for 300 million? And those are comparable numbers. So key takeaways on GDP. First of all, why is GDP important? Real GDP is a better indicator of output than nominal GDP, and GDP per capita is a better indicator of the well-being of a typical person in a nation than total GDP, right? Because it takes per capita, basically the per capita income of a nation, and, can, and you can compare them. But GDP is an, it doesn't have everything, and if you watch the introductory uh, video on the foundations of IB economics, uh, you saw that there's a comparison between economic growth, which is GDP, and economic development. And GDP does not take in all aspects of the social well-being of people. It's just a collection of income or output in a society. Um, certain work in GDP is not accounted for, right? If, you, if I go to your house and I cut your grass and I charge you $10, is that recorded? Not really, okay? So there's certain kinds of work that's not accounted for, Nowadays, people are working fewer working hours. In the, the, in, in, it's, they're no longer really in, widely across Europe a 40-hour work week, but maybe a 36-hour work week or a 35-hour work week. It does not, GDP does not include hidden markets. So if I go out on the street and I start selling um, peanuts, um, and, uh, you know, I roast them up and people come by and buy them, but I don't claim that as income. And where does that happen? Where is the hidden, the hidden, a hidden market happens? What about the work that housewives do? Is that not cal calculated? And that's some serious, serious work, right? But it's not necessarily paid. And so at least not in an economic sense. So GDP doesn't show that. It does not account for the degradation of the environment. There's something called green GDP, which as you deplete your natural resources, you're actually depleting the value of your, the resources you have in that country. Right? And GDP does not take into account either um, the, into account equity. Um, you can have really high GDP, 
um, but not have very good distribution of that income. You can have a really, really wealthy class of people that have you know, 1% of the population that has 40% of the wealth, and then the other 99% share the 60% of the wealth. Well, GDP would not show that to you. It just shows you an, uh, the overall income or gross domestic product, national income of a country. But here's the real big point. GDP is the aggregate demand in a nation. And this is something you need to hold on to. You need to remember. You need to feel <laughs> uh, excited about that you know. Because this is the key. Gross domestic product is the aggregate demand in a nation, G, C, plus, I, plus, G, plus, X minus M is GDP, and as a result of it being GDP, it is also representative of the aggregate demand curve. And if that doesn't make sense to you yet, that's okay. Hold on to that idea. It's going to come back to pay off when, we, when you get into the the, your studies of aggregate demand. All right, everybody, I hope you found this video to be helpful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.